So one of my workers, and I need the HR perspective on this, has told the other workers that he had a dream about us all working with our tops off. What's the HR response to this? Because <laughs> now he's just getting fucking ragged. Everybody's <laughs> like, oh, you're picturing me with my top off. Um, <laughs> so, like, did he want, it's like, is he getting what he deserves for bringing it up? Like, these are construction workers. Yeah. What was he expecting? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, a girl I don't know. Spot? Like, everyone, everyone to take their top off? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the, what you, like, was, he maybe just, was he just trying to bait everybody and taking their shirts on? I don't know. I don't like what good comes of at that pool project. He's going to be throwing slabs at the pool. (laughs) (laughs) Dropped another one. (laughs) Were you in the excavator when it dropped? Yeah. Ah, I was going to say, because whoever was running the excavator maybe dropped it intentionally. So you'd take your shirt off. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to take my own shirt off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 90 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, it was hot that uh, week. Yeah. Uh, I think I would pull everyone in and ha- perhaps have a team meeting about oversharing. Overshare? That's the. <laughs> that's see. You don't. That's like, the years I, of experience speaking. Because it is. That's good. I would, yeah. Has well, this I, happened before, Mike? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not in the let's all take our shirts off and work together, but I've had some over some people that overshare. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I I at first I if it's a, a single offender, I have pulled that single offender to the side and said, Hey, dude, like talking about how you think your stepdaughter's hot is not perhaps oversharing. Like I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it in your I mean, to me, morally, I think it's not. It's just twenty five years old. This is like, anyways, I don't want to get into this stuff. But I, <laughs> you know, maybe just pulling someone in and saying, you know, I think that when you overshare like that at work, you have to remember that these people aren't your friends; they're their, you're, they're your coworkers. So, you know, you might want to keep some things like the fact you want to see them all half naked private because you don't want to make them uncomfortable. And you also don't want to get picked on your horse's ass. Yeah. But now that it's out in the open, is it fair game forever? Probably. Yeah. Well, how are you going to shut it? Like, you're going well, to give you us- can't, that's the thing. You can't shut it down. And does it ever become such an HR issue that, uh, say, God forbid, uh, he quits because of bullying or something like that. And he says, well, they were always making fun of me because <laughs> I was talking about having their shirt off. Like, what's... <laughs> like, Does this person have a long history of oversharing? Uh, he doesn't have a long history with the company. So could is there potential for a long history of oversharing? Yeah. So is he looking at that other company and thinking, why did I leave that one? That was giving me less hours. (laughs) (laughs) Not the the same guy. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I I mean, if you're concerned that it could go to the point where you lose a a good employee, then you probably need to gather the group. I don't think I'm concerned about necessarily losing them but on like things could boil over on say a really hot day whenever everybody has well, good, their shirt good on. that it's october yeah 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 i'm just trying are... to think of the future here <laughs> do you think after the winter break this will resurface i think is it becoming there's some things people say and do that literally become part of the company culture that's true and they will be mentioned for many years to come and they will never vaporize and they literally become a thread through your company passed on from one to the next, to the next, to the next. Do you think that this story 
about the shirtless NDL crews all working together closely, making sure that the blue spruce are in a nice clump. <laughs> Do you think that that's the kind of story that will thread its way through your company and culture if you don't put a stop to it right now? I think it's a stain that will follow him in the company, but not necessarily stay as part of something that's ingrained in our culture if he leaves. The story stays with him. Yeah. It has no legs once he's gone. Not unless it's in passing. Like we used to talk about Brandini in passing, but he came back. <laughs> so now he's fair game again. <laughs> Do you say this is his legacy tour? <laughs> <laughs> he's on a legacy tour. Yeah. It's on a so yeah, I, I don't know. I would maybe say, like, let's not pick on people, I guess. Or, uh, do you have a harassment policy? Um, according to CFIB, we do. It's posted in the shop. You could read it. It's posted. I don't need to read it. Do I? <laughs> I signed maybe, it. Maybe you so whenever a, you start work, you read that. You have a job box meeting like Monday morning and just read that and don't say oh, anything else. Like a toolbox talk. Where, yeah, yeah, right. And just yeah. just read the harassment part right. of that and then like don't make any references to anything. <laughs> and then be like, all right, guys, go get them now. Put down the paper and look at the guy in the <laughs> eye several times. <laughs> what, you, what you should do is gather everyone around for the toolbox talk and tell them all to take their shirts off. And then give the harassment policy, read the harassment policy to the shirtless crew. Could you imagine the response from the GC? Just <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> like you got a bunch of shirtless landscapers in October. <laughs> could, could you do something similar where you said the exact same thing to your guys and then you take the brunt of the harassment from then on? Oh, take one for the team. Like Yeah. Like, yeah. is this is this employee big enough for your, for your business that you tell Sacrifice your guys yourself. that you had a dream <laughs> about them, <laughs> and then you become the fall guy, uh, right? I'm not. So here's the thing: I stay with the company no matter what, right? Not everybody hey, else so has that sort of that staying statement, power. Basically, so. in that statement, what you've said is. I'm never selling this company. It's not a saleable thing because without me, it's nothing. But okay, now move forward. But just I think any realist landscaper would know that they're not trying to sell their company for millions of dollars after they decide to shut the doors, right? Like that's a that's a pipe dream that anybody's going to sell their landscape company for more than the cost of their assets. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah. So, so I was just giving you a hard time because everyone always, <laughs> everyone's, no, like, always, everyone's always saying you got to build a plan for selling your company. I'm like, and I have the same opinion as you that yes, some people sell their company to sell it. Some people have, some people can do that. I don't. They're having a. Uh, I think I sent it to you guys. Uh, Grant Cardone is having a 10x landscape and pool event. Oh, I sent it into our group chat, and I actually uh, didn't see that. I know. I was thinking, if I have a choice between going to that or going to H and A, where do I get better content? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, like, if I'm going to take a company trip solely for content, do people want to watch me walk around H and A and show them all the booths, or do people want to watch what the fuck goes on at a Grant Cardone 10x pool and landscape event? I think I screenshotted it and sent. I, it's actually I sent it to you guys individually from the Not Our Finest Hour account. Oh, that's what because that was. I saw it on. Yeah, I saw it anyway. It's a screenshot because I had started talking to the per the um the guy with the feather who. Uh, oh he, yeah, I saw some of those messages come up in the group. I'm like, what the fuck is Mike he's, doing? Well, he's <laughs> <laughs> he's part of it. That he's he's running it with Grant Cardone. Wow. I wonder if there's case studies, kind of like the um, the one guy that 10 x his way to bankruptcy. Jail. J jail. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right to jail. <laughs> he 10 himself. Right. Uh, I don't know. I just thought it was interesting that 
because if I think if I had a choice, like H and A is very tempting to me because I've never been and I'd like to experience it. But honestly, I really feel like my time would be better spent at the 10x event for landscaping and pools because I would just love to see the absolute insanity that goes on there of what they're talking about. Yeah, you know? I just I feel <laughs> I. Would- I find it hard to buy into stuff like that. And I think you do too, right? That's like why I just... it's awesome. That's why I want to go. How long is that event? Uh, I don't That's a good know. question. Like I mean you could I'm sure you could like have enjoyment and uh stomach H and A for like two or three days that it is, but like how long could you actually stomach that 10x <laughs> event for before you like just lost it? I, I, so I honestly am interested in the 10 X event because I just, I just want to, I want to understand what kind of people attend it. And I want to understand better why they, why they're attending it. And I think the only way to accomplish those things is to go and attend it. So the feedback that I hear from 10X events, and I think there's some events that like are smaller group and you can get a lot of value out of them and stuff, but um, like those, those events where they have speakers and stuff, they're all speakers just trying to sell you something. So the speakers pay money to be on the stage. So uh, Grant Cardone gets money that way as well as they get money from attendees. So the attendees pay money as well as the speakers that are on stage, try to sell people into their programs. And then uh, Grant Cardone also gets a kickback from everybody that signs up into their programs as well. So that's so my thing is just a giant sales pitch. Yes. I can yeah. think of nothing worse. Mm. That's so one this... of the circles of hell. <laughs> One of the <laughs> that sounds like it's right next to you get like uh, free tickets to Disney if you go look at the timeshare. Yeah, oh, that's, a- uh, that's right. Yeah. That's I it. so do you think that so this influencer, this guru influencer is paying to be on the Grant Cardone stage, hoping to sell enough 10x pools. So this event is December 2nd and 3rd, so it's a two-day event. Perfect for my birthday. Let's all go. Oh, there you go. Let's celebrate Chad's birthday at the time. <laughs> <school. laughs> What's your birthday? Event? The fourth of December. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm wondering. It's in Scottsdale, Arizona. This thing. Do they have a list of speakers? Oh, wow. Um, Brandon Dawson, okay. uh, selling his last business for 155 million, 77 x x's EBITDA. And had a track record of helping thousands of business scale successfully. Uh, industry titans teaching winning strategies. It does not list who those are, but they are industry titans. Titan. You think that means they don't have them yet? <laughs> it could mean that. Uh, I like that take a lot. I really like that. <laughs> that is a great take. Maybe they don't. Um, and how to how you can continue to beat your competition, learn tactics other business owners don't know, so you can get ahead and scale faster. <laughs> Steal their workers wave. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this is not just a motivational seminar. This is a live two-day immersive experience that equips you with practical strategies, showing you the fastest way to implement them for explosive results. There's a bunch of gobbledygook crap. Uh, when the landscape industry change, when the landscape of your industry changes, so must your business plan. It's safe to assume you're often dealing with issues like labor shortages, increasing material costs, seasonal volatility, changing customer expectations, keeping up with technology. It's like me and the tilt rotator, uh, increasing competitive market. I don't, you know, I don't know. Pool and Lisbeth's business camp. Scaling in downturn markets, marketing, people, leadership. Wow, this is like a huge... Someone worked hard on this. There's three people on the cover. 
Oh, this is uh so this was five thousand dollars. Wow. It has been marked down to four hundred and ninety seven dollars. It's a steal. <laughs> it's not even ten percent of the cost. Now, get hmm. the executive ticket. I would absolutely rather go to what oh, is the, the Freedom Seminar? What's Andy and Caleb and Oh, the Hardscape Master Course. Doing, yeah, that one. I'd yeah. rather go to that. I spend my so, money on Oh, there we're back. We are back recording after a brief break. For we took for our commercial uh for our insert, sponsor. Insert sponsor here. Insert sponsor. It's the 10X uh event there is our sponsor. 10X event is our sponsor. So I was just getting to I had kind of fucked this because the five hundred it was a five thousand dollar value for five hundred dollars, and that's called the executive boot camp. And then the next ticket is the VIP boot camp, and it is nine hundred and ninety seven dollars. And you get so the first one you just oh, here's the two day live training with Grant Cardone, Brendan Dawson, and Tigran Gertz. That's the that's the executive, and you get exclusive ten x pools landscape and boot camp workbook. That's what you get for five hundred. For nine hundred and ninety seven, you get the same training with those guys, uh, but the, you get the addition of a private lunch and check in station just for VIP seat holders. I mean, I would pay five hundred for a check in station. How? What the fuck does that even mean? A check in station? Well, like, what do you check? I'm here. You get, you get your badge mm. and uh, a notebook I, and a pen. And... That's the check in. So and... I think that's the one where you smoke ayahuasca in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that's not so the package. You will also get opportunities to get questions answered by the speakers. Opportunities is not guaranteed. It's an opportunity. <laughs> so, yeah. So, the super VIP is nine one thousand. Is it? Well, hold on. So the VIP is a fifteen thousand dollar value for nine hundred and ninety seven dollars. I don't know who set the fifteen thousand dollar value, but so now we are into the super VIP thirty thousand dollar value on sale for one thousand nine hundred ninety seven dollars. It's a steal. Now 30, you will get. The first two things that are in every package, but now they've added reserved front row seating for super VIPs only. Intimate lunch just for super super VIP seat holders with the speakers. Lunch with your top off. Lunch with your top off. <laughs> Concier- lunch. <laughs> concierge white level service only for super VIPs. And an opportunity to get your questions answered by the speakers. So wait a second. What did you say the lunch was called for this group? Intimate. Intimate. But the group before this also had a lunch. What uh, was that, that one called? A private lunch. Tops on. How many lunches did these <laughs> two? Well, I guess there's two days, so they could have two lunches. <laughs> I guess I, I want to know what the difference is between an intimate lunch and a private lunch. <laughs> well, the private lunch. And check-in station for just VIP seat holders. The other one is an intimate lunch just for super VIP seat holders with speakers. Right. There's, so there's a $500 no, difference between an intimate lunch and a private lunch? Uh, it's $1,000. 1000 Wow. Yeah. And I also find it interesting that if you're a VI, super VIP, you do not get a check-in station. But if you are a VIP, you get a check-in station. Do you think a concierge white level service like that's it? There's there is there's only one serv- concierge service being offered at this event that I can see. Why do we need to name it the white level? What like what if I want a lower level? What if I want a brown level concierge service? Like what? That is a meaningless a white level concierge service. What does that mean? Does that? But does a white level concierge service? Does that vacate a check-in station? Are those two related? Mm-hmm. Is white-level concierge better than a check-in station? 
Must be. It's a thousand dollars more. I I still can't get over the fact that this thirty thousand dollar package is what fifteen hundred dollars. Could you imagine? Oh, no, it's nineteen. Going, no, the the, the, the fifteen thousand the fifteen thousand dollar package is nine hundred and ninety seven, and the thirty thousand dollar package. Chad, stop exaggerating and saying it's only a thousand. It's actually one thousand nine hundred and ninety seven. Oh okay. yeah. So I'm going to install a thirty thousand dollar entranceway or a backyard patio. But if the client signs up today, I'm going to do it for nineteen hundred dollars. Right. Could you imagine cutting your services, the price on your services, that much to get the job? Ten x so, it. So one thing's either the first number is overinflated. Well, they ten x the first number. They ten x the first number is the problem. Yeah, and then so they have I don't to believe, divide by fifteen. If I don't believe the premise. The thirty thousand dollars from the start. How the fuck am I going to believe anything else they have to say? I this so there's all these ten x passes that they give you, and it it says like so. But each of the passes has a different picture of these three different people on the pass, all in a different weird pose. This is like wow, wow, wow. I can't like I. I want to go to this a lot. I really do. So my conversation was, yo, so on the story that I responded to, it said, DM me the letters LFG, and I will get back to you with more information. So I did that from our um, podcast account, and it came back, and th it literally says this, yo, Yo, glad you're going to come back, come to the 10x pool landscaping. What is your name? I said, Chad. Thanks. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it said, awesome. What's your phone number? I'll send you the link. I said, 1-647-908-9197. Because <laughs> that's Mike's phone number. Right. Thanks for making that on the public information as well. Oh yeah. Well, you tell me we can't find your phone number anywhere. I guess so. Yeah. You I can't get the really news, bad. but you have Mike's personal phone number. <laughs> <laughs> and then he sent the link to here. Did they text you a link? Uh I've been getting a lot of spam messages. <laughs> <laughs> they probably 10x my my phone number everywhere. I didn't think about that. I knew I didn't want to use my own phone number. I knew that much. So when did you do this? Uh, I think this all went down on Saturday or Sunday. Okay. I don't think I've gotten any messages. <laughs> What's your name, Chad? <laughs> <laughs> What's your phone number, Mike's? It's strange. I've signed you guys up to so many things, and you guys haven't received messages. I don't get messages when I'm signed up to things. So my last question that did not get answered in this chain, because I guess the bot ran out of preconceived answers, uh, was thanks. Can't wait to do can't wait to do your offer. Oh, thanks. Can't wait. Do you offer a 20x course? 10 seems slow for the growth I want. <laughs> and they did not respond. <laughs> so I did not. Thanks, Tegan Gertz, Tegan Gertz, whatever you're name is we uh, should have him on to clarify some of these things tune in next week <laughs> <laughs> there's a free meet and greet in new york we can secure our seat now hmm. Hmm. this guy has a hundred and ninety thousand subscribers on youtube wow 31.9 million views that's it i'm getting a fucking feather do you even know what we're talking about, Mark? No, I don't know. I kind of glaze over with the 10x stuff, and it all kind of smells fishy to me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, yeah. How you know what I was going to ask you, Chad? Because I was really interested in this because I never used it, and I always wanted to. This is super off topic of where we're at right now. I how was using the uh, the Everest? 
Uh, I always nice. wanted, I, I, I always wanted to buy it and I just never found from it's, the time it came out I always thought it was super cool and I just never had the right client. How was it? Was it good? It's or? real nice. Yeah. Like I okay. don't really have complaints. So there's no like the spacers are really, really tiny, right? I'm just gonna ask that. And I gotta put nitro in on this. Ooh, so ooh, ooh. we spaced it ourselves and it turned out pretty good actually. Like uh like you use like tile spacers? No, we just hide it. And uh that's an NDL right there. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're trying to manipulate these big fucking slabs. Like the squares are the size of like a large rack, right? So maybe even bigger. It's um, sealed it's sealed though, right? Uh no. It's um the H D finish. They're dry cast though, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's like super clean on the top but it's definitely not like it's maybe it's sealed but it doesn't look sealed not i was thinking down. if it was sealed you'd be able to use the gravels yeah we didn't try the mm -hmm. gravels i don't think you would be able to get a gravel on that like a sealed but... product you can use a gravel on it because it won't you? like well the problem with gravels is it's sucking the air through the dry cast yeah and if it does that enough the, the slab might fall yeah into a pool, perhaps. perhaps. You gotta be careful. <laughs> you gotta be super <laughs> fucking careful. Uh, we didn't try the gravels on them. It went good. Super easy to cut. It's soft. And this stuff has had an extra winter to cure because uh, the pool contractor ran off with the client's money. So instead of getting installed last year, it got installed this fall. So basically all you've done for the last two weeks is install a product that you had for years that you never did install. Yeah. Yeah. You like spent the, a fair whack of time installing the Roka steps. The retailer was so stoked to see those two orders go out. <laughs> They've been sitting here for years. There's like green on the fucking packaging, like <laughs> moss growing on the fucking pack. We put the Everest down and some corners are like black because they've been wrapped up for a year, probably sitting in the shade. Yeah. So. We'll but it should clean up pretty off, nice yeah. if it's yeah if it's the HD finish or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's it's honestly it's seems like a really nice product right now. I always wanted to try it when it came out. I thought it looked like sparkly or something. It looked really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, it's cool when the light hits it right. Like, it's a beautiful, beautiful yeah, that's, thing. That's I what I do thought it would be. House. Yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, it's cool. Did we ever figure out who won the the bet? The, bet? the land clearing bet. The land clearing. Oh, bet. the land clearing bet. Where's that? We is should have the... Mark also estimate while he's here. Oh Did yeah. You remember what what mm -hmm. it? Uh, yeah, let Mark have a go at it. All right, let me get a pen. All right. This is even mm -hmm. cheaper than the last time I looked at it. Oh, that's. Let me open up. Uh, I'm gonna open up up Sankton. <laughs> wow. Dude, run your numbers. <laughs> Let's run it. Actually, I missed. I'm running, so, Chad, what, what was what was the parameters of this, Chad? Let's get Mark in on it. Okay, so approximately four days of land clearing. Um, we had a D seven dozer. We had a thirty ton shovel, and we had two rock trucks on site. Uh, and what did they move? Twelve thousand yards. So about twelve thousand yards of soil stacked it up in a pile they cut a swale through my let's say six acres of my 12 acre property um they pushed a bunch of old interlock piles over into the bush um oh, yeah exactly <laughs> what you'd expect from a landscape so Mike, yard. do you have do you have the bets written down mike i don't i think chad does i thought i did somewhere yeah, you know my kid drew all over that paper somewhere. <laughs> Did you so find? I, you have the bill for it now. Yeah, I got the bill after. So, what was? Week. What's your thoughts on it, uh, on Mark? What do you think that cost? Thirty-four. Thirty-four. I think is that higher than the rest of us? I think no, so. I, th I think I was thirty-four. I remember what my price was. I was American. twenty-eight. American, American. holy oh, shit! Oh, that's a lot. Oh, wow. wow, that's Ooh, like forty-five. We're from, the, we're from the oppression state. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, that's like oh Jesus. Yeah, $7, you're seven thousand dollars, right? <laughs> what's what's sales tax in New Hampshire? 
Live free or die, baby. Oh, <laughs> so that yeah. could add to it, maybe. So when you do a job, do you have to collect any tax? No. So you just give no them a tax. price and do the job. That is yes. fucking wild, bro. That that's is. awesome. <laughs> I know that's normal life to you. Do you know yeah. how much time and effort our like our office manager spends collecting HST and shipping it back to the fucking government? No. It's out it's outrageous. She spent like Kel, Kel spends an outrageous amount of time dealing with our HST. Because whatever we spend at the company, we minus that from what we collect and then we send the difference to the government. Yeah, but that's yeah, okay. Is that um your province or your or federal? Well, federal would be like that's a that's a federal tax. Okay. Yeah. We have lots of that. So do you have to collect that? No. So no, you let, like if you put in a quote to a client, I'm actually super interested in this. I find this awesome. Like if you put in a quote to a client and it says fifty grand, yeah. the job's fifty. You just collect fifty grand. Yes, and I get we pay our taxes once a year federally. Well, we make estimated payments through the year. Yeah, from where we think we're going, and then. You buy a bunch of tilt rotators at the end of the year instead of giving the money to Uncle Sam. <laughs> exactly. It's That's really actually how I bought my first tilt rotator. Is I, I was like searching for write-offs at the end of the year and decided to throw a tilt ro rotator on a machine. Nice. So, I, sorry, go ahead, Mike. I know a bunch of states are different. Like some states yeah. have sales tax and then some states you don't collect sales tax, but you pay sales tax. And then some states, you pay sales tax only if it's a home improvement or some sort of improvement on the home. So I know like from state to state, it gets really confusing. Yeah, it does differ state to state. But yeah, yeah New Hampshire, we don't have um, state sales tax. Do you live near the border? Could you work in another state? Uh, we work. At, yeah, I do. I, I'm pretty close to Massachusetts and Maine. So uh, very little in Mass, but we do occasionally work in Maine. So what happens then? I then I let the accountant deal with it. <laughs> right, that's the right answer. Yeah, but do they have tax? <laughs> like, do you have to collect Maine tax and then send it to Maine? Don't collect Maine tax either. No, I think there's a way where they end up paying afterwards. I don't really know. I seriously like I let the accountant deal with that. Huh. We've really not enough jobs in Maine that we do that it would have a huge impact. So. See, I, I don't know what would happen if I went and worked in Quebec. Mm -hmm. You know, Chad? Yeah, you get your tires slashed. And <laughs> Did you see I Zamco you posted a story of a guy he caught in his yard? No. He caught a thief, and the, the police were on him. No really? Way. Yeah, and it was on his story and everything. Tony really? messaged me the other day. He took a picture of our trucks together. Why? He, he, came, was... he came down to... Ontario, because he just lives in Montreal, right? Um, and he has a cottage not too far from Cornwall. So I forgot to uh, message him back. Somewhere in here. So you have, I don't remember. Oh, did you find it? what we all put on no, this? I, I know I was at 28. I thought I was like low 30s. I thought I was like mid 20s. Yeah, I slid right in the middle there. So I was right? Where, uh, well, you were definitely the closest. Nice. For four days, three and a half to four days worth of all of that equipment, my total bill after tax is $21,837. That's fucking crazy. <sighs> that is That's crazy. Cheap. That is a rock bottom deal. After tax? Is that after the deal <laughs> that you did with them? What's the deal that I did with them? Well, you, you were saying that you were waiting for, you were doing work for them. To see if you yeah, get so, some sort so of... we did some brick reinstatement on some of their uh, city work. They had us fix a bunch of other stuff. We did some hydro seating for them last week. I'm throwing everything into the pile just to to get my bill down. And I think we're going to be pretty close to square by the wow. time the season is done. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like um, eighteen five before tax. Eighteen five, four days, four heavy pieces of equipment. Like this isn't. It's five thousand bucks a day. Five thousand dollars a day. They're looking at run. like twelve hundred bucks a piece of equipment. That's insanity. So, what do you it think? 
a D7 dozer would run you an hour. So we have the D3. Mm -hmm. I've been charging it out at uh, 125, and I think I'm low. Uh, I'd say that. Uh, so a D7, a D7. To put it in perspective, I would bet a D7 dozer that's pushing hard is using four or five hundred dollars to fuel a day. Yeah. So this is uh, twice what you had uh, said. We're at like two fifty an hour. For what? A D seven. Well, that's so that's how, what I I just figured forty hours. You said four days. Yeah. yeah. I, I just figured four days, ten hours. I put ten thousand for the D seven. So that's two fifty an hour. So I was close. Yeah. I was there yeah, on yeah, that. That's, that's right. Maybe they work like four hour days or Yeah, the first day was a four hour day or something like that. So maybe thirty five hours could be. Um we got like a shovel, a thirty ton shovel at hundred and fifty bucks an hour. That's like I that's... put my eight ton out at that. Yeah. You know? I figured uh, the D seven and the well, you said thirty ton? Yeah. yeah. I figured the D seven and the we call them an excavator down here, but I figured those at two fifty an hour. It even says on my invoice, shovel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not That's, even. Lying. When does it be? When does it become a high ho? Well, I think a thirty ton <laughs> shovel a 30, is a high ho. I think a thirty ton is a high ho. Yeah. Yeah, but it says and shovel. Says shovel on there. Yeah, it's and besides shovel, it says dash all day. <laughs> dozer dash all day yeah rock truck how much do they charge you per hour for the rock trucks take a guess i i guessed 175 that's what i put down anybody well, else i what i think they're worth or what i think they charged you what do you well what do you think both give me both i think they're probably worth 175 200 and i think they charged you 100 bucks 125. So. I don't know. I have no concept of how much fuel a rock truck burns. Like, I have zero concept of that. I don't, I've never run one. I've never been yeah. around one. So I don't, like, I know the D3 was using like 150 bucks for the fuel a day. So D7's got to use at least 300, 400 a day. Yeah. Well, the rock trucks probably weren't going that far. It was just on your property, no, right? It was like they, they were going. running full bore back and forth, like in a mine or something. Um, or a quarry. But you go from zero to full throttle, I guess, all the way up to the back of the pile and, you know, like loaded. That's got to be a hard life in a rock truck. So yeah. how did they, if those, so it was 125, two at 125, so that's 250. How much was the shovel? A buck 50. 150. And how much was the dozer? 250? 250. So you're at six hundred and fifty an hour. Ten hour days. Yeah. So they must have just filled me for three days. Right. So it's sixty five hundred a day times three. You got yeah. nineteen you get nineteen five. Which is pretty close. Do they charge 19, you for the 20, floats 20. in and out? Nope. That's the next level of insanity. My so there, well, they could have just built that as machine hours, right? Right, and not necessarily a line item for float. Really, um, would I? I always because I don't know. I would always build as a line item. I charge to float in. I don't charge to float out because when I float out, it should be going to another job. Right, and if it's not, then that's on me. Right, so I only charge people to float in. That sounds then, like a really. Really low rate for that shovel. Was it, is it like is it old and they figure like it's paid for or something? And they're um, one hundred and fifty is cheap money just to keep it working. I don't know. I mean, it did exactly what we needed it to do, yeah. right? So, like a thirty ton shovel is still as long as it's There's, running to float for two rock trucks. A thirty ton. Well, they drove seven. the rock trucks over because their yard is five minutes from mine. Oh, so they probably didn't even chain down the fucking equipment. Oh, probably not. Yeah. So that's why they didn't charge you for float moves because it's fine. Yeah. So to float the dozer, you have to float the dozer and the blade separately. 
That's two trips. Like they actually split it? Yeah. Oh my. You take the blade right off. Yeah. So I figure any any place that this dozer goes, you need to have a shovel to load the blade. Hmm. Yeah. Right. And like I love working with equipment, but that sounds like a giant pain in the ass. It seems like a giant pain in the ass for something that's only going somewhere for three days. Like if you yeah. were if you're floating a D seven in for a two or three month project, I totally see it. But if you're going somewhere for three days, you think they would have bought like a brought just bought a smaller dozer? I don't think they have a smaller dozer. <laughs> Maybe that is their smallest dozer. Yeah. Well, no, like I think it's their only dozer now. They've downsized quite a bit, but um I guess if it's your only dozer, you're also splitting it in half because it's the only dozer. Yeah. I'm that that thirty ton excavator is probably worth two million dollars. Um do you think so that much now? Well at what size do they get so big you have to dismantle them to move them? Forty ton? I don't know. I don't know. Well they do that like on a three thirty five and they Taking the stick off of it or Yeah, I don't know. Certainly like in the three fifty or something they would be. Or yeah. maybe. They yeah. start taking them apart. Close. We've had this job that's been going on for three years now. And it's sewer work that keeps collapsing or something like that. So the GC's been back four times and like the ground keeps collapsing their trench boxes and shit. So they have to they've brought in this forty ton shovel like four different times and floated it away over the last three or four years, just trying to get this pipe to stay put. Like it's fucked. I just can't imagine the amount of work they have to put in to get this job right. Well, or the amount took, that they're losing. The float that excavator is that's a big undertaking. Yeah. Yeah, that's a hell of a job. I don't know. Well, if they're if it's the green belt, then they're just going to make sure the developers get re- um, reimbursed for any of their losses. Really, that's what's happening. Yeah. Mm. So we had a section of our of our of the city of Toronto is called the green belt, and the premier, the guy who's in charge of our our province, Mark, he basically told all his developer friends he was going to release certain sections of it. So they went around and bought this land for pennies, and then two weeks, like two weeks, so one of them took a eighty million dollar loan at twenty points to buy the land. So you don't, don't tell me that this guy didn't fucking know what was about to happen. And they they changed the zoning of the land, and the eighty million dollar land became worth like a billion dollars. Well, if it makes you feel any better, there's just as much corruption where we're free as there is where you guys are oppressed. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's the same everywhere, I guess. It's New Hampshire, one of the first states. Oh yeah. Is that um, why you guys got to live free or die and no one else can uh, take it? Yeah. It's like, it's the ninth state. What's the first state? Virginia, right? Virginia. I, have, I don't on, know. Something I, on the East coast. I don't know. Do you quiz me on American history now? No, I just <laughs> wonder. I just like literally wonder. I don't know anything about American history. So. Well, the, the town I live in now is supposedly like the seventh settlement in the country. Really? Oh, That's yeah. kind of neat. So you guys got like, do you guys have, do you guys do a walkthrough tour where it shows you where you burn the witches and stuff? Oh, that's down in Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> we don't witch burn up here. In- <laughs> no, not up here. No, live for your die, baby. You want to practice the- witchcraft? <laughs> well, we to stop here. That's that. That is actually the truth. That if you're going to live free or die, they should be able to practice witchcraft in New Hampshire. Right. Yeah. Is uh, what's the what's the capital city of New Hampshire? Uh, Concord. Cochrane. Concord. Concord. Not Concord. 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 I had no idea. Delaware is where Biden's from, right? Uh, yeah. 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 Not from New Hampshire. He's not from New you Hampshire. You don't take any ownership over him? I don't take any ownership of any politician. 
I feel the same. Yeah. I have equal disdain for both parties. I have equal disdain. We have three, which makes it a little three? bit. Three? Yeah. Uh, we have a bunch of bullshit parties, too, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, what we, we have. have. Yeah. We have a third yeah. one that's quasi real. Like, it's sort of real. Like, they get, they've get they been elected, it, so I guess they're real. It's a spin off of the other one. It's a spin off of the other yeah. one. Yeah. Well, uh, well with the third for us is the independents, but like, they're not really independent. That's kind of. They're only in independent when it's advantageous. Yeah, probably. I mean, like, what well, Bernie Sanders is an independent, but yeah, he ran for president as a Democrat. You got to, I mean, because if you run as an independent, you have no chance. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, you won't, won't have a chance. So, what color are the hoses on your tilt rotator? Uh, they're yellow. Oh, end con. Nice. I don't know oh. any Canadians with an edge con. Oh, what, what do you have on yours? I got a tilt rotator, or sorry, a uh, uh, steel wrist and a grip. So I got green hoses on one and black hoses on the other. I've never even heard of grip. Grip's good. I like it. Really? Yeah. Huh. Which one? Yeah, do you I, like? I mean, Encon hasn't even been in the states for I don't know five, six. I'm, I'm guessing, but uh, Dirt Ninja, I think, was a, one of the first guys. Yeah. I'm working the Encon Canada hard to get a free tilt rotator. I, I feel like if well, I say enough bad and shitty stuff about tilt rotators. See if you can get me a free t shirt. <laughs> I bet I can. I would bet money I can hook you up with a t shirt. Please. Well, I hope someone can because Encon can't see him too. And you can see two? the magic he does. Yeah, with, I only uh, have two. Mugs. Right. They could uh, throw in a t shirt for that. You would, one would think, right? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of hats, two? too. You have two? two? Yeah, we have two. And you didn't get a hat? Actually, I, 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 should, I should back <laughs> up. I, I did get hats. And I think maybe they sent me like double X shirts or something. Oh, okay. Like like when I'm at medium. The throwaway shirts. Yeah. Well, I, got no, yeah, I, gonna, yeah. I, I got no problem putting the heat on these people. Yeah. All right. We'll make it medium shirts then if you're gonna like put pressure on them. I'm gonna well, Encon Canada has made some comments on my non tilt rotator videos. So uh, like they they actually want me to buy pool noodles that are yellow and put them on my swing bucket. <laughs> So there is an Encon Canada then. They are available. There is, yeah. Well, they made the suggestion of the pool noodles. So I'm going to get idea. some yellow spray paint and spray yeah, the like, uh, Yeah. A pool noodle can turn any machine into a tilt rotator. Yeah, this, this can of drum clad can turn. <laughs> <laughs> we have swinging ditching buckets, I guess, on our machines. There's that. You just like a standard hydraulic bucket? Yeah, it's just a standard yeah. swing bucket. It's yeah. not a. We have them on the. the eight, we have it on the eight ton. Um, yeah, I think you got at least have one of those, right? I mean, there's people that would say that's cheating. So I guess I'm. Yeah. I'm. Uh, yeah, I've been trying to work them by saying negative stuff constantly, so it's a big deal if I get one. Interesting it's, strategy. Yeah. <laughs> It's the kind of strategy that's really paid off in my life. <laughs> really, really paid off well. Uh, but I feel like that kind of got them on the hook. Like they're on the hook. They're, at the, they're cresting the water, but they're not out of the water yet. And it really, it's when they leave the water, getting them to the net, that's the hardest part of the whole operation. It might work. Well, we talked earlier about like, Reels going viral when people start chattering and arguing with each other and telling you you're doing it wrong, right? So, yeah, maybe there's something to that. Maybe, yeah. maybe you can uh, parlay that into a tilt rotator. I've never been particularly successful with any other sponsorship, so I don't know. Like, <laughs> neither has this podcast. Still no oh. sponsors, huh? You know. Do you need a sea can of diamond blades? <laughs> <laughs> I'd listen to that one on my way home from Pennsylvania. <laughs> do you need a sea can of diamond blades? <laughs> How did you come across like a sea can of diamond blades? I, I honestly, man, like last week I was having a really shitty week when that guy called me. I should call him back. He's such a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, I think there's 
there's more that needs to be known about the that. day the day we recorded that podcast that was like the worst day of the last fucking two years i just was like, <laughs> don't fuck it was she didn't drop a slab in a pool yeah that's true yeah that's what, true what yeah. happened with the dump is it shut down shut down yeah shut down hmm. but it is what it is can't change it it's uh you know you're gonna have your own war with india <laughs> <I'm gonna laughs> <have my own laughs> <water from here. laughs> yeah. well uh on that were, note <laughs> none of our trucks were there so we got we got warned by the locals to get out because hmm. they know all they know us and they know some of our so they just flagged our truck down on the road and well you guys are all in the there was 45 trucks going in at one day 45 different trucks Yikes. But these trucks are going there not like once a day. Like these trucks are all hauling like 10, 12 loads in per truck. So did they find them coming in? Like no. They pull up to the dump with a load and they get a ticket. No, they uh no. I wasn't there and our trucks weren't there because we got a warning an hour before they came to get our trucks out. Um they uh they just came in and shut it down. And then it's up now it's on the, the property owner. It's his problem. He's going to be upset. Uh, yeah, I haven't talked to him, so I know him. He's a super nice guy. Um, I don't know exactly what role he played and what went on or what role he didn't play. Or I know that I got kind of fucked, but whatever. Not the first time. Won't be the last. So, And sometimes good stuff comes out of stuff like that, so you never know. Maybe something good will come out of it. So You get paid to haul it all away again. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot, bro. That's a lot. Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, so it definitely has taught me to be more creative this week. Yeah. We had a couple other things go haywire on us this week. Like, it's only Tuesday. I've had a couple other things go pretty haywire this week, too, already. But <laughs> some things are going really good. Some are... You know what was interesting? Uh, two of our guys were away on Monday for different reasons. And so I uh, I went to the job site they've been working on um it's a large uh temporary parking lot that we've been working on with uh um our like our client hawkins has had us there um helping with the parking lot and so i went there to help with the parking lot it was my first day ever going there and they were setting setting light poles like 30 foot tall light poles i was like well, i don't know anything about this so the crane guy got off the crane it's like Maybe he's like, I'm going to do the rigging. And I'm like, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> I, I vote for that guy doing the rigging because I don't know what the fuck is going on here. But uh, it was interesting to do something I'd never, I've never done it before. I've never experienced it before. It was kind of fun to go do like something I just never, we were, they were sitting in like uh 30 foot five in a, they were five foot six deep auger holes and they were sitting in it. Then you pour concrete around them as a footing. It, uh, but yeah, we did, and trying to get them straight because they're tapered, so like the oh, level yeah. doesn't work on them. It's sure. but they're tapered slightly, but they get really thin at the top because they're thirty feet tall or whatever. It's uh, it was super interesting. Yeah, and the electricians were there, and the vacuum trucks vacuum out the conduit so you could see the conduit coming in the holes, and and it was all done with the GPS stick, which is super cool too. Like they ended the conduit on either side of the 30 inch hole and then recorded it in the GPS stick and then went back like a month and a half later <laughs> and picked the dead center and they drilled the auger through and didn't hit the conduits. Wow. Ah, that's cool. They're all buried. It is like insane. Te- that is an insane level of technology to do that. Huh. That is. That's good. Cause you know, normally you would have set all those light poles and then dug all the trenches through the parking lot afterwards to run the conduit. So you could, but this, this thing can like pinpoint where the conduit ends and starts on the other side. It was super neat technology. Really cool. Definitely made job way easier. I do feel like some of that GPS stuff might be like next step kind of thing around here. Maybe some of us. I, I, I guess you'd have to have a big enough job with enough elevation. Maybe it, it costs a bit to make the files up. I know that. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I'd like to see it in action in person. Like to determine if it's, um, you know, it would make sense, but 
I do feel like like we spend a ton of time on on layout and checking grades and having yeah. a second guy there, you know, with the stick and yep. over yeah. excavating and like hauling out more than you have to, bringing in more than you're supposed to. So I need a dedicated person for that because that I think is beyond the skill set of so interesting my current crew. I have an interesting so there's a I was always under the impression that this was because we've worked with another company that had one of these sticks too. And they had like a stick person, a mm-hmm. dedicated stick person yeah. that did the stick because yeah. they actually lay out all their trees and shrubs like that planting the, you're doing. The they, GPS man. They, the planting is, you're doing right now would have been completely laid out by the GPS guy. Yeah. And then they would send the crew in. Yeah. So the that's crew exactly. would, ne- would never run into this. Too many the, spruces in one location. Probably. Nah, whenever they take the easy in clump planting, the bed is, I don't know, 500 feet long or whatever it is. Right. And it just says plant this variety in here and it's 20 different varieties. And then it gives you the standard generic drawing and they say, follow this drawing and put them wherever. Right. Individual trees. Absolutely. They'll go and mark them out individually, but clump planting they just plant the whole fucking the whole thing. They define one side of the bed and the other side of the bed, and that's it. So, when they went to do the drilling of the co- of the light posts for the conduit, um, they literally. So we have a guy that works for us named Kyle, and I. Kyle's not a technology guy. He's like a BMX bike riding kind of guy. Um, and uh, they literally handed Kyle the stick and said, here, you're the GPS guy today. <laughs> and from that, he successfully determined where these 20 poles went. Nice. With no particular training on the GPS stick. So it makes me think that there's a possibility that these G- GPS guys are frauds. <laughs> who just don't want to do anything. <laughs> And they say, I'm trained on the stick. And then they make it more complex than it is. So what are the repercussions if you find out now that one of Kyle's holes is in the wrong spot? Two uh, weeks well, later, after everything is gone. I, are you on the hook? Because Kyle was the GPS man that day and he said where everything went. Or does is he still not qualified as the GPS guy? That's why they gave. It I to guarantee him. this has fucking happened to someone before. Uh, so well, they not me. He <laughs> didn't. He didn't request the stick. The stick was given to him. So if you don't request the power, are you responsible when the power goes awry? That's given to you. Did he put the paint dot? I don't. This, also, this I wasn't the, there the day that he laid it out. This is what I do know. Every hole we drilled, the conduit was right on either side, and the hole was in the middle. So I feel like he did not fuck this up. So there won't be a pending lawsuit. I'm like I'm completely under the impression that he got it right. Yeah, I, somewhere yeah. in all of North America, oh, someone yeah. has done this exact same thing and drilled the fucking conduit right out. Or the other problem is they don't have the updated file. Exactly. Like when you're running the GPS stick, I think you need to make sure you have you have the because that happened on one of the jobs I was on where potentially there's a lot of pools and I never got paid. Um, <laughs> it uh, the GPS had the wrong file sometimes. It's the same as the wrong drawing, right? The the, the yeah. stick's only as good as what you put in it. Absolutely. That's why we always fed at Wheaties every morning and sit down to a bowl of weed <laughs> was ready to go um anyways i don't know what happens who's like re- i'm whoever's running the stick i i think there's a separate insurance for the people who do this layout for a living Probably. just like consultants and engineers have their own insurance yeah. right? i think the, these Architects. guys need their own insurance for doing this because you could fuck things up pretty bad. Oh, God, yeah. So, Imagine yeah. telling the civil construction guy that they're six inches high on a 
four acre um, plot that they got to dig out. And then the new file comes in and they're already eight inches low. <laughs> right. So all that material went out and obviously it can't go back in because it's native. So you're bringing something else in now. That's a mistake that somewhere somebody has to pay for. Yeah, probably the same as every other construction error, though. The GC, yeah. the GC or the contractor ends up paying for it. Yeah, landscaper pays but for it. Somewhere. What's interesting is the the one job I worked on, the GC was in charge of the stick. So they would have their own stick GC stick person come around and do all your layout for you. I love and that. Then, yeah. uh, consistently, he had the wrong files and the wrong drawings and laid it out wrong. And we yeah. constantly had to redo stuff. Yeah. He also, when he used to come twice a week, he used to map out all where all the conduits were and where everything was put in so that when the job was finished, they could give the file to the client and then the client would know where every conduit was on the property and what each conduit did because it was matched on the GPS stick. So that was the thing too. So. Uh, I thought it was kind of neat. I never thought about it in a residential application, but you're right. You spend a, Mark's right. You spend a fuck ton of time on all that shit that maybe the GPS stick would sell. I know they're expensive. Mm -hmm. I think they're, I don't know how much they are. Like they how are much expensive. 50 grand. We almost bought yeah. one. Yeah. I want to say you're in the, yeah, in the we almost bought one north last of year, the year before. I want I to mean, say that I looked at them at Northeast Hardscape over the winter. Uh, the whole rover system. We looked at Trimble. Yeah, Trimble rover uh, system. Sixties. Wow, that's so, perfect. Yeah, it's due north of fifty. Yeah, yeah. We wanted to put it on a tilt rotator and a dozer. Like you can get a unit that comes off one and goes on the other, and it goes on a stick too. And yeah, like it, yeah, yeah. But that's definitely way too complicated for me like i would have to have an in-house guy going around making the plans well the file in. the file you need to send to someone and they'll make the file yeah 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 but i bet i'd get it back and i'd delete it somehow or change some elevation and it would fuck up the whole <laughs> thing and mm -hmm. then i'd be cursing all day throw my hard hat so blaming you... someone else for something being wrong that's not wrong and you need, brand, like you need Brandini to step up to the plate on this. Oh, That's right. Yeah. Brandini has to finish high school before he goes into this GPS college sticking. level GPS sticking. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's pretty neat. I liked it. I don't know if we'll be spending 50 grand on one anytime soon, but it was kind of neat when it was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the dozer we had has GPS set up on it. We didn't have the GPS, but it has it on it. Yeah. So, all right, that's an episode. Are you guys good? I think that's, that's it. Good. Mark, uh, where can our audience go find out more about you and find that uh, video of the slab uh, falling in the pool? Yeah, uh, gmlandscapes.com and uh, Green Monster Landscapes on Instagram. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Hopefully, I brought no value. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. being on the podcast, Mark. Yeah, thanks, fellas. Take, Take care. Thanks. Yeah. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good night, All right, guys. You too. See you later. Right. Right. PK, you're going to close this out with an outro? Uh, well, I said that's the end of the podcast. Oh, Take I care. guess that's it. That's it. Bye.